Welcome to the State Television Company, Western Armenia, broadcast for today. The Armenians of the Church of the Holy Amina Perkic in Shushi, Rafi Kordoshan. The ecosystem of Mount Nemrut is in danger. Turkey opens schools in occupied Artsakh and Nakhchivan. A fire in Eastern Armenia. We are still here, Armenians living in Western Armenia. It's again the time of Nejde, Shaolans Navur's 100th anniversary memorial evening in Prague. Reconstructions and so-called restorations of four years cannot hide the reality. Azerbaijanis are trying to erase the Armenians from the Church of St. Amina Perkic in Shushi by desecrating it. St. Amina Perkic, from the very first day of its construction, was an invisible but powerful obstacle for the enemy. This wonderful structure was also hit by the drowns of Azerbaijani during the 44-day war. Immediately after the war, the enemy took steps to desecrate the church. First, they defaced the dome, then covered the entire temple with the net so as not to be noticeable and under the name of reconstruction they tried to eliminate its Armenianis and historical evidence. However, as documented by many photos and historical materials, the church has not lost its Armenian appearance and significance. Let's remind that the Armenianis of the church is seen by many architectural features. For example, the cross-shaped plan of the church, the dome, which rests on a free arc system and many interior halls testify to its Armenian origin. The spatial structure of the St. Amina Perkis Church is similar to the Cathedral of Echmiadzin. Moreover, a number of historical documents and photographs regarding the church have been preserved, which talk about its Armenian identity. In particular, the 1919 photo shows that the dome of the church remained unchanged until the liberation of Shushi. Azerbaijan cannot erase the Armenians of church regardless of reconstruction and restoration attempts. Shushi's holy church Amina Perkic was and will remain an integral part of the cultural heritage of the Armenian people, and this heritage must be preserved and passed on the next generations. Now let's talk about Nemrut Mountain, which ecosystem is in danger. The increasing number of visitors threatens the wildlife of Nemrut with its 2,948 meter high in the Tatwan district of Bitlis. The brown bears living in the area near Nemrut have attracted attention both for their charm and more often for their aggressive behavior that recently appeared in the media. Tourists seeking contact with bears disturb the balance of the ecosystem by feeding them and taking photos. This is dangerous for both humans and bears and also harms the natural diets of wild animals. Bears learn to get food from humans which disrupts their natural behavior and endangers the ecosystem. Experts warn that it is necessary to take urgent measures, in particular to inform visitors about the danger and to ensure the natural environment of wild animals. Turkey opens schools in occupied Artsakh and Nakhchivan. And the Turkish Education Foundation plans to open a school in occupied Artsakh in the near future. According to Azerbaijani mass media, this was announced by the chairman of the board of the foundation, Birol Akgyan. According to him, it is planned to open schools in Ganja, Armenian name Ganzak and Nakhichevan. Akun noted that the cooperation between Turkey and Azerbaijan in the field of education is successfully continuing at a fast pace. This process is considered a process of distortion of Armenian culture and historical heritage, which threatens the preservation of Armenian identity. A fire was in Eastern Armenia on 7 October at mm, about 1 o'clock. The National Center for Crisis Management received an alert that a fire had broken out in the storage area of the Domus Store Salon located on Nisakov Avenue in Yerevan. With the BIS-1 degree of complexity of the fire, four combat units from the Resk Department of Yerevan went to the place. The fire was contained at half past 3 p.m. and extinguished at 4 o'clock p.m. According to preliminary data, the two-story building was completely burned in the area of about 3,000 square meters with property, equipment, furniture, etc. 17 combat units, six operative groups, two car ladders, nine water pipes of the Yerevan municipality were involved in the firefighting operations. 
There are still Armenians living in Western Armenia. Whether you like it or not, there are still Armenians living in Western Armenia today and their presence is a testament to the unwavering survival of our nation. This photo taken in Shatahat in documentary proof that we are still there. In the ancient Armenian lands, the Armenian people continue to live and preserve their culture and national identity, despite the dark pages of history and heavy losses. These lands with the history of thousands of years remains are integral part of our memory. And Armenians living here are the living fact that binds it together, providing that Western Armenia has never been forgotten. Our presence is a sacred heritage, which is carefully passed down from generation to generation, reminding us that Armenians continue to survive in their homeland, even in the most difficult conditions. Before 2018, Gargi Nerdez's name often evoked a negative reaction as Nerdez was honored by people who had not read any of his works and were materialistic, a thing that Nerdez was struggling against. Now anti-patriotism, materialism and indifference have become open propaganda, which depends the problems of our people. Nerdez warned that the source of danger is we ourselves and with the overestimation and weakness of pro-foreign orientations. Although more than a century has passed, his predictions about us remain accurate and relevant. A memorial evening was held dedicated to Charles Navour, 100th birthday at the French Institute in Prague. The event was organized by the embassies of Armenia and France in the Czech Republic in cooperation with the French Institute. French Ambassador Stefane Kruza gave a welcome speech followed by a screening of the documentary film Aznavour and his world and a concert by Richard Ihuel and Thomas Johman who performed Aznavour's most famous and popular songs. Heads of diplomatic missions accredited in the Czech Republic, members of the diplomatic corps, representatives of the Czech social, political, scientific, cultural circles and the Armenian community were present at the event. Dear viewers, this was all for today. I wish you a good day. Goodbye.